Hi y'all. Good morning. Thank you for such um, a positive response coming out of the last two videos regarding frequently asked questions about psychotherapy and also the reasons as to why you should consider getting into personal therapy in this year of 2022 so that you can be able to promote your mental health and wellness. I like that you are now beginning to consider that it may actually be a lifeline that is good for you and not necessarily something that is for others who are not um, synced with themselves, with other people or with the world. We all need good mental health care. We all need to take care of ourselves. And psychotherapy is just one of the ways that you can be able to do that. So I'm happy and excited for you. Yay! Karibu sana. So this video for today is essentially as a result of a reflection I was having this morning about what this year holds for the realization of the military veterans um, law uh, bill rather passing to become a law and i thought about the journey how it began from 2017 finally making its debut um, on august 1st of 2019 it was read by the honorable senator um, Haniri, uh, the senator from Vihiga, and from then on, the process took off and it took such a long time before the report was actually read on the Senate floor and this was in last year, 2021. And we are yet to um, have the first reading done and for the public participation invite to be made and for the process to continue up until the point where it has to leave the senate and go to the national assembly where it will go through um, the processes and procedures that <clears throat> sorry all bills go through so that it can finally become um, a proposal that the president can be able to look at and decide to assent to or not okay do i think we shall have a military veterans law before uh, both houses break for and wind up really um for election i don't think so um, and this is on the basis of just reading the mood of where you know the legislators are at um, where we are as a country vis-a-vis -vis elections and of course just by taking into account the small journey that this um, petition which now is a bill um, has gone through I am of the opinion that it is not veteran care is not a priority for parliamentarians um, in this country. Probably the only people who care about um, having a military veterans law um, talk about caring about it when the camera is on their face. I'm sorry if I'm sounding too harsh. So I thought to just encourage myself by whetting my appetite uh, with what other countries that have operational um, veteran laws are doing because the journey will not end with the culmination of the 12th assembly when the new legislators uh, come into parliament we shall start the process again and again and again and again until it is done irrespective of how long it takes so 
I wanted to read you a summary of the veterans law for the Netherlands. It is said that God gave them Holland and they created the Netherlands. I think that is so darling. So I begin. On 11th February 2012, the veterans law was ratified. The formal name of this law is the law that defines rules concerning the special duty to care for veterans. This law describes the duty of the government regarding the consequences that military deployment can have on the physical and psychological health of soldiers. Even if those, even if those effects only become apparent after a long time. The Veterans Law is an initiative of several political parties who consulted with military unions and other organizations in the society to gain support for this initiative. The purpose of the law is to create an integrated, proactive and preventive veterans policy. This bill has been supported by all parties in parliament and the veterans law was published officially in April 2012. The integrated policy provides now one single address to which a veteran can apply to with any question he or she may have. At the same time, this provides an opportunity to monitor whether the services are delivered in a timely and adequate manner. The law also indicates that the responsibility of the government should be aimed at the prevention of health problems as well as at providing assistance for the next of kin of the veterans. The rapid recovery of the veteran but also the continued support for veterans with health problems is not dependent on the moment in time at which these problems become manifest. This support includes material support, social support, and mental health care, but also provides assistance with finding a new job. The law clearly defines who is responsible for what kind of assistance and care, and by this, the lines of responsibility and account are also clear. This law applies to all former soldiers and for soldiers who are still in active service and who have deployed in peacekeeping missions or in war. This is an extension to the existing definition which, in which only former soldiers are recognized as veterans. It further stipulates that the Ministry of Defense should promote appreciation and recognition for veterans by society through a number of activities and facilities. Examples are the Dutch Veterans Day, the Veterans Insignia, and the free railway tickets. The responsibility to provide care. The responsibility to provide care is defined as an obligation, duty, of the government towards its military personnel and veterans. The assistance, support, and care before, during, and after deployment also involve the primary relations of the veteran. This is organized, for example, through information days, social, medical, and psychological support during and after deployment, and through reunions and meeting also for the home front. The special responsibility to provide care. The special responsibility to provide care applies to veterans who return from their mission with physical or mental problems. This support is aimed at restoring the possibilities to participate in social and professional life as soon as possible. A distinction is made between primary care, such as provided by a military doctor and social work, and care on a second, more specialized level, like the military mental health care or the military hospital. Reintegration is, provide by the, is provided by the so-called service center for reintegration. The objective of this service is to find as soon as possible a suitable and appropriate position 
for personnel who can no longer be deployed for social medical reasons. It also sets out which financial claims can be brought forward regarding this disability, taking into account different degrees of disability. National Veterans Care System. The National Care System for Veterans is a national network of healthcare institutions in the field of social services and the military and civilian mental health care. The law stipulates that a veteran can apply to the so-called central access point of the Veterans Institute during 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I suppose 52 weeks a year. The demand or need for care is assessed and as a next step, the veteran will be guided to an institute that provides care that suits or fits the needs of the veteran best. In most situations, the veteran is offered a choice between care provided by a military service or department or by a civilian institution. Veterans Registration System. Furthermore, the Ministry of Defense is obligated to set up and maintain a veterans registration system. This guarantees that every veteran is identified and it provides the means for the ministry to communicate with every veteran. This data can also be used for policy and research. The law also stipulates that the minister promotes scientific research into diseases or disorders related to the deployment as a, sol as a soldier during a mission. Other measures. The law specifically offers the option to extend the employment for three months to prevent a soldier from leaving the service directly after returning from a mission. Further, it guarantees that the veteran will receive an income of 80% of the last earned salary in case of disability and during reintegration. A case coordinator supervises the implementation of these measures and this case coordinator monitors every step in the process. Also, a veteran's ombudsman will be appointed, extending the possibilities for a veteran to submit a complaint regarding the acting and services of the government and of official public services. This function is accommodated by the National Ombudsman. The Veterans Ombudsman can conduct an inquiry or investigate on a request of a veteran or on its own initiative and he or she reports to both Houses of Parliament and to the Ministry of Defence. The law is Currently, that is as of May 2013, elaborated in detailed legislation and administrative measures. Within two years after the law has become effective, an evaluation will take place on the effectiveness and impact of this law. From then on, this evaluation will take place every two years, thereby creating a legal base for the veterans' white paper to be sent by annually to the parliament. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. That's my hope for us, my wish for us that we get there. Right? Where care and protection is by law. And if other countries have done it, who are we not to do it? And um, I'm looking forward to this happening, irrespective of the... Um, absencing of the people and systems and organs that ought to actually be present to make this a reality sooner rather than later. So there you have it. I shall read you a summary of um, the next country and I hope that you look forward to hearing what countries and governments that have taken uh, full responsibility for their military veterans look like. So go ahead and have yourself a good day and um, place a special prayer 
for the journey of the Kenya Military Veterans Bill because at this rate, it's going to take an act of God. Ciao!